Diseases at the National Institute for Communicable Diseases. Dr. Thomas, thank you very much for joining us this evening. Thank you. Now, just looking at social media a little bit earlier on, it seems like there's actual panic about this whole thing. But take us through what it actually means. Do people have to remove all the processed meats in their fridge? So, as Minister Motuledi um, said earlier in, in the press briefing, there's definite proof that poloni manufactured at the Enterprise Foods production facility in Polokwane is linked to the outbreak strain and that the outbreak strain has been found within that factory environment. Um, also we have evidence that the contamination appears to be on the external surface or the, the casing itself of, of the poloni. So the concern is there that the listeria can be transmitted from the surface of the external casing onto other products that the polonies come into contact with. Therefore, as a precautionary measure, we are urging the, the public to avoid all polonies and other ready-to-eat processed meats, including Viennas, sausages, frankfurters, uh, Russians. And, uh, very importantly that people must identify these products should they be in their fridge if they are please remove them put them in a plastic bag tie it tight and and keep it carefully stored away some retailers have already issued statements that um, they're inviting customers to return to the shops with these items if they've bought any enterprise or rainbow chicken ready to eat prepared items and they will be um, refunding um, customers for those. In addition, if you do have any of these products in your fridge, it is extremely important that you clean your fridge as well as your kitchen surfaces and your utensils thoroughly with a solution of one teaspoon of bleach in a liter of water. Wash with soap and, and water thoroughly first, then wipe down with this bleach solution. Now Doc, something else that keeps coming up is the question of whether it's just the products from Rainbow and Enterprise because those products have been officially recalled. But another question that comes up is what about other cold meats from other retailers, for example, and other brands? So at the moment, um, I think investigations will be intensified to cover manufacturers of a much broader range of ready to eat. Um, processed meat products but you know given that we found the outbreak strain in one particular factory and this this factory has you know the, the largest market share in in the country in terms of producing ready-to-eat processed meats so we are certain that that is the cause of the outbreak however the reason that the the rainbow um, the RCL foods uh, factory was also issued with a compliance notice is because Listeria had been detected in some of its poloni, chicken poloni products and although they weren't the outbreak strain, the fact that we were detecting Listeria in the first place constitutes a health hazard. So um, the minister and you know in, in, in consultation with, with other government departments um, decided to, to issue compliance notice um, for, for that RCL factory as well. Now, Doc, the outbreak strain has been identified, but let's look at the symptoms um, that we need to look out for if we have consumed these or if we're not feeling well in general. So it's extremely important to remember that most otherwise healthy people, even if you have consumed food that is contaminated with listeria, do not fall ill. There are certain risk groups um, where people are more vulnerable to infection and so people that belong to any of these risk groups need to be particularly um, aware of, of any symptoms. So risk groups include pregnant women, very young infants under the age of a month, anyone over the age of 65 and anyone with a weak immune system. This includes those people living with HIV, with cancer, diabetes, liver or, or lung disease or kidney disease and people on, on medications that suppress the immune system. The most common symptom is um, a simple what we would call a stomach bug or gastroenteritis 
with fever and diarrhea and that typically goes away on its own in a few days. However, in these high-risk groups of individuals, the, the more serious complications include when the bacteria enters the bloodstream and causes a generalized infection throughout the body, we call that septicemia, or when it enters the bloodstream and travels to the brain and causes infection there called meningitis, or in the case of a pregnant woman, the bacteria enters the bloodstream, travels to her unborn baby and can cause um, severe complications including miscarriages, stillbirths, the baby being born prematurely and being born with um, listeriosis. So for those risk groups of people, should they develop fever, diarrhea and, and feel unwell, they really should go and consult their healthcare practitioner. Now, Doc, what type of treatments are available for listeriosis? So there aren't any vaccines available. Um, and it's simply that people that are in high-risk categories need to be aware of any fever, diarrhea, or fever with, with sort of rapid onset of, of feeling terribly unwell and go to their healthcare practitioner. Listeriosis is readily diagnosed by laboratories throughout the country, both in the public and private healthcare sector. So there is, the, you know, there, there's ready capacity to diagnose it. It's treated with two simple antibiotics called ampicillin and gentamicin, which are routinely available at all healthcare facilities. So it is treatable as well. However, because it is targeting vulnerable people in those high-risk groups, it is still a severe disease and we expect that between 20 to 30 percent of people who contract listeriosis will die. Doc, we'll have to leave it there. Thank you very much for joining us. It's been quite an insightful discussion. That was Dr. Juno Thomas from the National Institute for Communicable Diseases.